welcome to Rotted Reviews. This month, I tasked the Rotted requesters to either find me a Christmas horror movie to watch and review that I haven't already covered yet, or <laughs> anything else really, but what they picked would determine where in the month it would land in relation to the big day. Considering I've reviewed over 100 Christmas horror movies on this channel so far, I recognize the difficulty in that task, but patron Nikki came through with a truly unique pick that I never would have thought of. Today, I'm reviewing the 1968 episode of the BBC show Omnibus titled Whistle and I'll Come to You. For those unfamiliar with it, Omnibus is a series that aired an impressive 35 seasons from 1967 to 2003, which was a show that was largely comprised of educational documentaries surrounding the arts, but from time to time they would feature a dramatic adaptation, such was the case on May 7th, 1968, with Whistle and I'll Come to You. Based on the 1904 ghost story, Oh Whistle and I'll Come to You, My Lad, by M.R. James in his literary collection, Ghost Stories of an Antiquary. So it wasn't born of a program about Christmas. It aired in May. So does the story have anything to do with Christmas? No, no, it doesn't. So what's the connection? Why am I talking about it now instead of December 29th? Well, if you were born and raised with BBC One on your television, there's a good chance you know. But for the rest of us, Omnibus's production of Whistle and I'll Come to You wound up inspiring the series A Ghost Story for Christmas, where classic scary short films were shown around Christmas time to continue on with the tradition of telling supernatural tales around the holly jolly holiday. As a big inspiration, Whistle proved to be a frequent recurring segment to retell around the 25th and is not necessarily an every year tradition for folks, but is still visited with regularity and has become linked to Christmas time for a lot of people. So what is this story about? Clocking in at a runtime of about 41 minutes, this is a ghost story built upon layers of atmosphere more than any overtly frightening threat. We follow the main character of Professor Parkins, played masterfully by Michael Hordern, as he finds himself staying at a remote coastal hotel in Norfolk between semesters teaching. Hoping to get in some leisure and some studies, he happens across a whistle in the dirt and, after cleaning it up, reads the inscription in Latin, Who is this who is coming? And then, of course, promptly blows the whistle, setting off a chain of events infecting his dreams and his waking life. At the end of the day, this was little more than standard ghost story campfire fare, but was elevated by the tone and the performances. Even still, when I got done watching, I couldn't help but feel a little confused. Was that all there was to this? I needed to know more. So I went ahead and I found Ghost Stories of an Antiquity on the Gutenberg Project and read the short story for myself. And the literature proved to provide a little bit more in the way of context, but was still quite simplistic in nature. I think this may be one instance in which time has truly aged the story. It's easy to blame gore-soaked, splatter-fest, violent films for desensitization, but even nary a drop of blood ghost stories these days provide a lot more in terms of scares and thrills. Still, there is something beautiful and haunting about Whistle and I'll Come to You. Horton's performance as Parkins was truly exceptional, even if it was downright irritating at times with the character, a continuous symphony of old man noises. It seems odd for me to want to deliver a trigger warning for such a gentle film, but I'm going to anyway. If you suffer from misophonia, 
you might want to tread cautiously, as it seems like three quarters of Professor Barkin's dialogue is delivered in between bites of food and furious mastication. And the atmosphere really is one aspect of this that does sell the story and is a very major positive point in its favor for me. There's a constant air of foreboding as the professor goes about his business of, I guess, leisure, as much leisure as he can. This is a very quintessentially turn of the century British production with quintessentially turn of the century British people. There's a lot of waxing philosophical in conversations between the characters in this film. <laughs> and all of it with a very high level of aristocracy to it. Going by the differences between the literature and this 1968 production and the dialogue differences especially, I don't know, it was an interesting choice. I think I prefer the literary version, but even so, in this film adaptation, just uh, the professor going about breaking down all of the conversations into their most basic and fine-tuned components until it's basically almost rendered irrelevant. Uh, if we're at, if you've ever had a conversation with anybody about anything about uh, you know high concepts, philosophy, anything like that, and they get so bogged down in the details that the conversation winds up getting lost, needing to define this word and scrutinize this phrase down to its finest point over and over and over again until the entirety of the conversation kind of has gotten derailed. That's a lot of what happens here. He wants to talk about uh, whether or not somebody believes in ghosts. But before we can do that, we have to presuppose and we have to define and we have to scrutinize. And eventually it gets to the point where you kind of realize towards the end of the conversation that we don't know where anybody lands as far as whether or not they believe in ghosts. The survival of the human personality. Ah, ah, survival of the human personality. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's a different question again, really. It has the grammatical appearance. A real question, but I wonder, does it really, does it really mean anything either? But on a storytelling level, that really does kind of add to the character. It adds some dimension and some richness that allowed the characters more vulnerable moments later on to kind of be felt a little bit more, to have a little bit more resonance. At the end of the day, this is a very old fashioned style ghost story. But thinking about Whistle in context of its time, more specifically thinking about it as a near Twilight Zone era production, I can see how it can be impactful, spooky, and iconic all at the same time. And with such a vivid place in an entire nation's history, I think it's worthy watching for everyone, even just on an academic or cultural exposure level. And it's perhaps on that level more than any other that I truly appreciate Nikki's recommendation of the 1968 film, Whistle, and I'll Come to You. I caught it on YouTube for free. I don't know how long those links will stick around. It may be a uh, public domain at this point. I'm really not sure, but take a gander. See if you can find a copy. And if you can, maybe make it a part of your Christmas horror viewing this year. So thank you very much for joining me and thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, please click like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And beyond that, remember next time you wanna watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotten.